Microsoft Power BI is the number one business intelligence tool on the planet, and I'm going to show you how anyone can get up and running in just a few minutes. Hey guys, Chris Dutton here from Maven Analytics, and I am so excited to showcase the power of Power BI. Now, whether you're a data pro or just getting started, Power BI can help you work faster and make smarter decisions. In this demo, we'll play the role of a data analyst for the Federal Aviation Administration. We've got access to a database containing 2 million commercial flights from major US airports, and our task is to use that data to understand which flights are getting delayed or canceled and why. Along the way, I'll walk you through each step of the BI workflow. We'll load up the raw data, build a relational model, add calculated columns and measures, and design an interactive dashboard to bring our data to life. So let's fire up our engines, head over to Power BI Desktop, and get to work. All right, so obviously our very first step is to load our data into Power BI. Now here in Power BI Desktop, we can head to Home, Get Data, to see all of Power BI's data connectors. And for this demo, we're going to keep it simple and use local CSV files. So let's go ahead and click Text CSV. These are the tables that we're going to be working with. We have information about airlines, airports, and cancellation codes. And this flight table, this is our key data table here that contains records from every flight from those top airports in 2015. So let's start there and double click on that flight file. That's going to open up our preview pane here based on the first 200 rows. We could load directly from here but I'm gonna click Transform Data to open up the Query Editor. Now this is where we can prep and explore and QA our data, but I just wanna start by getting a lay of the land and seeing what data we have available to us in this flight table. So in this case, it looks like every row or record represents a flight. We've got some sort of an index column here at the beginning, information about when each flight took place, year, month, day, day of week. We've got an airline code, flight number, the origin and destination airports, and then all sorts of information about the departure time and delay, whether it was canceled or diverted. So the first thing I wanna do is really just isolate the columns that are most relevant to us. So what I'll do here is select year. I'm gonna control click month, day of week, and airline. I wanna break it down by origin airport for sure. So let's grab that field. I'm gonna to wanna to use the departure delay column. And last but not least, let's grab this canceled column and the cancellation reason. And now I can just right click and remove the other columns, which gives me this nice clean table. So there are all sorts of tools that we could apply here to transform this data, to add calculated columns. But one example that's really relevant here would be if we wanted to create a new column to basically capture the flight status for each row. Was that flight on time, delayed, or canceled? And I can do that using some of the fields that we already have. We've got this departure delay field in minutes, and it looks like we have this canceled binary flag that's a zero or one. So what I'm gonna do is head to the add column menu. I'm gonna add a conditional column and I'm gonna name it status. And now we're just gonna check if certain conditions are met. So first thing we're gonna check, was that flight canceled? Was the canceled column equal to one? If so, flight status will be canceled. Otherwise, let's check that departure delay column if that one is any value greater than zero, if there was a positive delay, then we're gonna call it delayed. And then if neither condition is met, the kind of catch-all else statement would be an on-time flight. So we should end up with a new column called status with three values, canceled, delayed, or on-time. Let's press okay. And there we go, so it's looking pretty good. We've got on-time flights that actually look like they left early, some delayed flights like here in row six, and we've got a canceled flight here in record 26 as well. So that all looks good. And I think this gives us what we need to start our analysis. So let's go to home, close and apply to load this data into Power BI. Now, this is a pretty big table, again, about 2 million records. So it might take a little while for all of the data to load. All right, looks like it wrapped up loading. And now if we head to our table view, we'll see that flight data has landed right here. So that looks good. Let's go ahead and grab those additional three CSV files using the same approach. So get data, text TSV. Let's start with airlines. And again, we'll transform to open the query editor. So this table is pretty simple, just two columns. We've got an airline code or IATA code followed by the airline name. And one adjustment we need to make is to promote that first row as headers. And we can click the use first row as headers option and we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and close and apply. 
There we go. Power BI has added our airline table to our table view. Let's go ahead and grab our third table, airports. We'll transform. This one's another relatively simple dimension or lookup table. We've got an airport code here, followed by the airport name, the city, state, country, and it looks like we have Latin lawn as well. So small table, that all looks fine. Let's go ahead and close and apply. There we go, we've got our airport table. And finally, let's go ahead and grab that cancellation code data. We'll transform, super simple, two columns, cancellation code, A, B, C, D, and the description. And again, we need to promote those headers just like we did before, and we can close and apply this table as well. So now that our data is loaded, it's time for step two, building a relational model. So even though we've loaded this data, these tables still aren't connected or related to each other. And you can see that here in the model view. We just have these distinct independent entities. But the good news is that instead of writing SQL code or configuring complex joins, Power BI makes it really easy to connect these tables and create a proper data model. So what I'm going to do is drag our flight table, our data table, to the middle and kind of surround it with my other tables here. And all I need to do is click on the primary key from each of my lookup tables, like the code in our airline table, and connect it to the matching field or foreign key in my flight table. So that code is going to map to airline in our flight table. That's going to open up our relationship dialog box. We can confirm that we're matching on the right field. We've got a one to many cardinality relationship, which is what we're looking for, and a single cross filter direction. We can press save. And we can do the same thing with our other tables as well. So we'll grab the code from our airport table, connect it to origin airport in our flight table. Settings look good. Press save. And finally, we'll connect cancellation reason to cancellation reason, press save. And what we've created here is known as a star schema. We've got a central fact table surrounded by lookup or dimension tables. And this is a best practice for data modeling because it allows us to filter and slice and dice these flight records using fields from any of our dimension tables. So we're in good shape. Now it's on to step three, adding DAX measures. Our goal here is to enhance this data model and create new fields and metrics to support our analysis. Things like the number of flights, the percent of flights that were delayed or canceled or on time, and so on. So we can do that right here in our model view. What I'm going to do is actually right click the flight table. This is going to assign these measures to that table just for organizational purposes. Right click, choose new measure. And here in the formula bar is where I can write that DAX code to define this measure. So let's start simple with total flights. And all I want that to calculate is the row count of our flight table. And we've got a DAX function called count rows with one argument, which is the table. I'm going to select flights, close the parenthesis, press enter, and our first measure is defined. Now we can also format all of these measures as well, but I really just want to focus on getting them properly defined first. So that's total flights. Now I want to create some variations to calculate canceled flights, delayed flights, and on time flights. So let's go ahead and create some new measures and we'll start with canceled flights. Now a few ways to do this, we can base this on the canceled binary column in the flight table, or we can base it on our new status field that we created in the query editor. That one's probably simplest. So let's go ahead and use a calculate function and we're going to calculate that total flights measure, the count of rows in our flight table under a certain filter condition. So we only want to calculate in cases where the status column is equal to canceled. Close the parenthesis, press enter, and that should do the trick. And now because I'm going to repurpose a lot of this code, let's go ahead and copy all of this DAX, create a new measure, and we can just kind of tweak it for the others. So now instead of canceled flights, let's do delayed flights, which again is going to calculate total flights where status equals delayed, press enter, and then you guessed it, same process for on time. Paste that DAX on time flights where flight status equals on time. All right, so now we have some really valuable volume metrics that are going to be important to us. Last thing I want to do is calculate some rate metrics like percent of flights that were canceled or delayed or on time. That's going to give us a better apples to apples comparison between airports or airlines that might be very different in terms of volume. So let's go ahead and right click, add a new measure, call this one percent canceled. I'm going to use the divide function here, and I'm basically going to divide that canceled flights measure that we just created 
by the total flights measure. And the divide function gives us this kind of if error clause at the end. So if we divide by zero, let's just show a dash there like so. And again, I'm going to copy this DAX and repurpose it. Press enter to lock the percent canceled measure in. Looks good. And then just two more. We'll do percent delayed. And instead of dividing canceled flights, we'll divide delayed flights by total. Press enter. And finally, one more, which is our percent of on time flights. Percent on time. We're going to divide those on time flights. There we go by the total. Press enter. And there you go. We see those seven new DAX measures indicated by that calculator icon, which are all organized here inside of our flight table. Now, at this point, we've loaded the data, we've built our model, we've defined our calculated fields. Now it's time for the fun part, the fourth and final step, visualizing the data. So let's jump into our report view here. And I've created a new tab called Flight Status Dashboard. And what I've done is just sketch out a rough wireframe for the dashboard itself. And this step is really important to make sure that we're answering the right questions, using appropriate visuals, and creating a clear and logical flow. So what I'm thinking is that we create a few distinct sections here to provide detail about total flights, delayed flights, and canceled flights, since they all tell us different stories. Now, I love to lead off with KPI cards or big metric numbers right here at the top. I'm thinking we can add a little context by showing a trend over time. For total flights, I think it would be really valuable to break that down by airport to see where most of the air traffic is coming from. And for delayed, I really want to understand which airlines are most and least reliable in terms of on-time departures. Now for cancellations, there are a few different ways we could cut up this data. In this case, I'd love to see the composition of cancellations by type and also by day of week to see if there are certain days when cancellations tend to be most common. And then along the bottom here, I'd love to show a breakdown by flight status along with a visual, maybe a stacked bar to show that composition as well. So why don't we start with those metrics? And for that, I'm going to use kind of a standard card visual here. And all we need to do is drop in the field that we want to show. So in this case, first card is going to be total flights, like so. And I'm not worried at all about format or style right now. I'm just going to really rough it in. So don't pay too much attention to exactly how it looks. And then remember, we wanted to add that monthly trend to provide some context. Line chart's going to be a great way to do that. So our x-axis, our time series, that's going to be the month column from our flight table. The y-axis, the values, that will be total flights. And if we want to get fancy, we could add a nice little tooltip in here on hover to show something like the percent on time flights as well. And so now when we do that, if you hover over this chart, you're going to see the total flight volume by month plus that percent on time. And again, not worried about style, just going to get it in place roughly where it needs to be. And now instead of reinventing the wheel over and over, I'm going to just copy and paste these two visuals two more times, because all I need to do is change the metrics to show delayed and canceled flights instead. So for a card, let's change total flights to delayed flights, like so, about 790 total delayed flights. And we'll do the same thing here with our line chart. So instead of total flights, same story here, delayed flights. And we can update that tooltip instead of percent on time to percent delayed. There we go. Same thing for canceled. Let's modify this card to show canceled flights. And we'll modify this line chart as well. Canceled flights on our Y axis and percent canceled on tooltips. All right, so while we're dealing with cards, let's go ahead and add these three cards for flight status values as well. So I'm going to copy that card, drag it down here, and then just paste it two more times. And these are going to be those three flight status rates. So percent on time, percent delayed, percent canceled. So we can go one by one. This is going to be percent on time. Our second will be percent delayed. And our third card will be percent canceled. There we go. Now we can start chipping away at some of these other detailed charts. And for this one, I'm going to use a classic bar chart here. Great way to show categorical comparisons. I want to show different airports here, but instead of the airport code or the full airport name, I'm actually just going to pull in the city field from our airport table, which is a bit more intuitive and readable, which you'll see in just a second. And for X axis, the actual values, we're going to break down those total flights. And there you have it. We see Atlanta had the highest amount of flight traffic, followed by Chicago, Dallas, etc. 
go ahead and copy this because I'm going to create another bar chart here to show the delay rate by airline. Paste the bar chart, drag it on over, and make some updates here. So instead of the airport city, now we want the airline from our airline table. And instead of total flights, I want to show the percent delayed. And now moving on to cancellations here. Anytime you want to show that kind of percent of whole, that composition, you're dealing with a minimal number of segments, something like a pie or donut can actually be a pretty good choice here. For legend, we're going to use the cancellation description from our cancellation code table. And for values, we're going to show the composition of canceled flights. Now, right off the bat, we can see that overall, 57.3% of canceled flights were due to weather, followed by airline or carrier reasons. So pretty interesting kind of pattern starting to emerge there. And now last thing here for cancellations, we want to see the day of week trend. Copy this bar chart here, resize it a little bit. And I'm actually going to turn this one into a column chart. And instead of airlines, I'm going to break this down by day of week. And for my Y axis, I'm going to look at the percent canceled. Now, last but not least, we just wanted that one more compositional visual showing total flights by status. I think for this one, using something like a 100% stacked bar will be a really good fit here. And what we can do for X axis is show total flights. And the legend, how we want to break those flights down, that's where we can input that calculated status column that we created. So that's going to show the composition of total flights based on how many were canceled, delayed, or on time. Now, last thing I want to show you really quickly is something called visual interactions. This is a unique feature of Power BI, and it's a really valuable one. Basically, it determines cross-filtering between visuals. So if I select a certain airport city here in our bar chart, how do I want the other visuals on my dashboard to update? So you can see all of these visuals are kind of highlighting based on that filter context. And to modify that, you can head to Format, Edit Interactions, select the kind of base chart that you're dealing with, and determine how it impacts the others. So in this case, instead of highlighting this other bar chart, I wanted to refilter that chart. Same goes with the donut chart and my column chart here. And I can go through this process kind of chart by chart and really customize how I want these interactions to take place. For instance, if someone filters a cancellation chart, where we end up only looking at canceled flights, it doesn't really make sense to visualize these percent on time or delayed values anymore. So we could actually tell Power BI not to impact these visuals when you make changes to the donut. Now there are many more interactions that we could configure here, but that should be a pretty decent starting point. So at this point, we have all the elements of a great dashboard, but it just looks sloppy. We aren't using color strategically. We still have a lot of noise and clutter in our visuals and the general spacing and alignment needs a lot of work. But with a little formatting magic, we can transform what we have here into something that looks like this. What I've done here is use design principles like enclosure to group related elements. I've used color more deliberately and consistently throughout the report, and I've cleaned up the visuals to eliminate as much noise as possible without losing clarity. Now we can really dig in and start to uncover some interesting patterns and insights. For example, we can see that there were about 240,000 flights from Dallas-Fort Worth. 57.2% of them were on time. JetBlue was the least reliable airline. Cancellations tend to be most common on Mondays and Sundays, and nearly three quarters of those canceled flights were due to weather. We could also drill into specific airlines, like American Eagle, for instance, right here, and see that it flew 118,000 trips, primarily out of Chicago and Dallas, and that it has an unusually high cancellation rate of 4.8%. So that's a wrap. In a matter of minutes, we were able to transform a massive raw data set into a clean, user-friendly dashboard that reveals patterns and insights that otherwise would have been lost in the noise. Now, if you're excited to learn more and build job-ready skills, check out our best-selling Power BI desktop course, or dive into our specialist path, which covers desktop, service, advanced DAX, PL300 certification, and more. You can also explore our entire suite of self-paced courses, guided projects, and portfolio tools, and create your own personalized learning plan for free. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more data content just like this. I'll see you in the next one.